health issues. Um, she enjoys um, leading positive change in preventive medicine and the management of every form of neurodivergent issues. I have seen her reverse some of the things that people just think it's conclusive. I mean, things like Down syndrome, um, when people say they have special needs children, I have literally seen our research reverse some of these things. And, you know, last week we were having a meeting because I meet with her from time to time and she was explaining the science of some things to me. I just had her at the meeting as a student, you know, to say, well, what kind of a human being is this? Because our ability to research complex medical issues and reverse them, it's just something, you know, beyond even me. I respect our intelligence from day one. I knew that this is someone you need to have in your corner. She's one of us. She's um, a, a citizen of House of Saviors. She's in the UK chapter. And um, I'm always blessed to have her. So today, I have my pen and my paper ready. I want to take notes. When she's done, I'm going to come back. If you have questions, we're going to grill her a little bit. But this person is a lecturer. She's very good. And um, so, House of Saviors, please go to the chat box and welcome with me, Dr. Debo Desola Ajiboye. Okay, Dr. D, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you so much for the kind words, for your vote of confidence in me. Thank you, thank you. And for the good works and for everyone here, for making the time to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. I uh, should I just dive in or do a preamble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the floor is yours. I'm a student. Oh, today. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, just going by our creed, um, I see, I respect everyone here, and I know we work in different fields. You know, providing solutions, being saviors, um, helping each and everyone. So. Just like PF has um, said to me, I also give the same grace to everyone here. And um, regarding my profession, I have been opportune to do the public health, to work in both the preventive aspect of medicine and in the diagnostics. So I work as a GP and I've also, I also work as a reflex consultant. And I have seen, I've compared, I've worked in Nigeria and here, and I've seen that the trajectory, the difference between the outcome of different of people is based on what they know and do per time. So we are what we know. And um, I'm here to bridge the gap. I prepared properly. I'm gonna cover the health, um, health screening from head to toe, and I will do it as fast and as succinct as possible. I'll employ you to get your papers, your pen. It's gonna be very informative. It's not, it's not just blood pressure, blood sugars, like what you know. I'm very thorough and I'm driven by excellence and I see my work as worship. So let's start, let's dive right in. Health screening, like we all know, you know, we've heard of several ish, um, um, incidents, like we just keep on wondering what could have happened, what could have gone wrong. And, you know, by the time we dig, dig, dig deep, we're like, oh my goodness, this could have been prevented. So my aim, my objective is to empower every one of us here, empower everyone, even to, it's a way to be able to help yourself, your parents, your children, and even to you, the world at large. There is no better time to have this power than now with the constant immigration in Nigeria, with the scarce resource here in the West. I think it's about time for us to take this very seriously. So let's go right in. I'll, I'll be sharing my screen and I'll be going through. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, we can. You can see. All yes. right. So. Health screening. When you think of health screening, what we what we think about, what we talk most most times, what I hear is maybe do your blood pressure, blah blah blah, you know. But health screening can be blood test, it can be an investigation, and it can also be a general examination done by medical personnel to evaluate your health status at a particular time. Now I'm emphasizing at a particular time because it's you could screen today and be discharged as safe, and tomorrow you develop a symptom. So today, I'm going to run through the major comprehensive health tests you can do from a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of age. And I will also talk about the red flags, those worrying symptoms to scream about. So today we're talking about health um, tests to scream and symptoms to scream about. 
Now let's continue. Now the importance of health screening, you all know that we need to know about our risk factors and how to prevent serious illness from developing. We should know how to detect any covert infection as soon as possible. Also, also screening improves, improves your chance of recovery um, because the body has the ability to develop some life alternating changes even before symptoms are noticed. It ultimately lowers healthcare costs. It's better to prevent than to firefight. And also you develop a positive therapeutic relationship with yourself and your doctors. I enjoy when patients come in with cold cases and I and we always get a better outcome when that happens. Of course, you're gonna increase your lifespan and your quality of life. Now let's start from the health screening test that you should do from your 20s. I know I, I don't know the um, age group of, of um, the demographic here, but if you you can write it on behalf of your cousins, this is Christmas period, people are gonna come, will come to your house, you're gonna visit people, you can discuss this with people. Now, from your 20s, it's very important to know your genotype and your blood group, um, particularly for people that live in the country. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> the genotype is your, um, you know, when, we, when you hear of AA, AC, AS, and SS, so we have four. So this is like your unique DNA. This is what makes you unique. This is what encodes your individuality. That is your genotype. So we have four, AA, AC, AS, and SS. Now your blood group eh, refers to the entirety of your antibodies, your antigen, your ability to fight infections. And there's a particular protein that every blood group contains. No, 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 no. It, you either have it or you don't have it. It's called the resource factor. So if you, are, if you are A negative, that means you don't have the resource factor. If you are A positive, that means you have the resource factor. So that's different between genotype and blood group. And I would, if I have time, I would explain why this blood group, exactly this blood group, why is very, very important. Now let's move to, let me even say, let me tell you now. Now, if someone has got um, a resource factor, maybe you are A positive, and you get married to someone who, had, who doesn't have the resource factor A negative, what usually happens is this. When you have a child, the first child will survive, will be, will, will be alive, but subsequent children might start dying. So that's when we have this issue of what's going on. We have just one child, we're getting pregnant, but by the seventh month, six month, the child just suddenly dies in the womb of the woman. Most times it's due to something called resource incompatibility. So when you are, while you are dating, in fact, before your children get into this point of having a relationship, let them understand that these are important questions. It's not genotype with the ASSSAC. We can always have that discussion later, but blood group is very important too. Now let's go to the eye. There's something called glaucoma, which causes sudden eye um, sight loss. So it's important every six months to go to the optometrist. You don't even have to go to an ophthalmologist. Go there and check the eye pressure because glaucoma can suddenly cause, it can cause irreversible blindness. And um, let's go to the teeth. Check your cavities every six months. The dentist will always prescribe uh, um, regular visits if necessary, but it's important to start from age 20. Now for blood pressure, every family should have a blood pressure measuring machine. It costs 25 pounds and it's early detection of high blood pressure because it's a silent killer. And people can have high blood pressure as early as in, as in their twenties. Now, um, the reading, let me tell you, the normal reading should be, the, the upper number should be less than 130. The lower reading should be less than 80. Anything above 130 over 80 at home should be reviewed by the doctor and try to check it every Sunday from your 20s. Now, I hope I'm not going too fast. No, not at all. Oh, okay, all right. So there is something called the liver function test. 
Now, um, I would um, implore everyone, especially people who are working in the hospitals or with body fluids or with blood, blood products, to kindly check their hepatitis B, A and B status. Now, if you have, been, if you have had the vaccine as a child, it's I, very important. In fact, that was one of the first things I did when I got to UK. I did it privately. I didn't even allow the NHS to do it for me. I went privately and I got myself a booster dose. So get yourself a booster dose. You don't want to have hepatitis B. It's more dangerous than even HIV um, infection. So um, it's very important to check your liver function test, especially hepatitis A and B status, and do it from a 20 and above. Um, of course, your weight. You, you have to check your weight and height and um, calculate your body mass index. So the normal, range is between 19 and 25. Anything above that <laughs> is not good. Because as you get, as you grow older, your ability to lose weight becomes a bit harder because the metabolism slows down and aging starts from age 30. So if you're going to, if you're going to have a very good outcome regarding your weight, you need to build the habit from your twenties. Now let move, let's move to kidney function test. Um, if you, we, there's something called, we, we, have, we have the kidney stones. We have something called the, um, um, something called gout, which is a buildup of uric acid in the body. So once in a while, if, especially if you've got a problem, a family problem with the kidneys, maybe, maybe um, a granny has got maybe kidney issues, just check your kidney function test. All these tests I'm mentioning can be done at the same day in the hospital with the same blood valve. So you don't have to take blood all the time for all this. You just need to, speak with the doctor that I would like to check this, this, that. I'm sure the doctor would enjoy talking with an informed patient. Most, most doctors now don't feel threatened by the level of your knowledge. So feel free to discuss this with them. Yeah, so let's talk, let's talk about the blood glucose. Now, if you've got any family member who has got diabetes, please, when you get to your twenties, just check your blood glucose. I wouldn't want to give a range of numbers now because depending on the machine you use, um, you know, the numbers vary per machine. So just look at the normal range for the machine, the, the glucometer you buy and check your blood gl um, glucose. You can do that once every six months. Now let's go to the thyroid. I will talk, now the thyroid function, the thyroid is the hormone that controls the way our body works. Our body metabolizes food. So it's, the, it's, the, it's like the stabilizer of the body. Now if the thyroid hormone, now we've got a gland on our neck here, it, at times you just wonder, my neck is getting swollen or I'm beginning to become irritable, easily angered. I'm having to go to the restroom to pass stool more than usual. I'm, I'm, I'm having an unusual feeling of, there's, a there's an unusual reaction to temperature changes so that people that feel excessively hot when there is no one feeling the same way in the room it could be due to thyroid dysfunction. So it's, it's, um, it's an hormone to check. And if you're having the symptoms, even if you're in your twenties, please check it. Um, if it's low, there are other symptoms, but I would um, talk about, we can talk about that later. Now, there's something called the sexually transmitted infection. From your twenties, please screen yourself for chlamydia, gonorrhea and syphilis. Chlamydia is very common in young people, um, probably because of the lifestyle. But you know, if you're trying, if you were thinking of settling down, getting married, screen yourself for chlamydia. And if you if you have a life, oh, I now I'm talking as a doctor now. I'm I I'm just this is just what we tell people to do. And also, there's something called the Pap smear. So at age 25, automatically, if you're here, you're gonna get. A call from the surgery to come have your cervical pap smear done, um, which or, which prevents cervical cancer. So we want all we want to do is to detect any abnormal cell on time, and there's a surgery something we can do to stop it from progressing. Now, in um, in men, in in no in children from 13 years, they usually give them this vaccine, HPV vaccine and they give them the boys too. 
Now, if you moved down from Nigeria, if you just emigrated here and your son does not have that, you can speak with the GP to have this HPV vaccine. So as it prevents um, cervical cancer in women, it prevents oesophageal cancer in boys, in men. So this HPV vaccine is very important. So aside during the pap smear for women, you should also have the woman popular HPV, that's the name, vaccine. And you can request that from the GP. Um, let me move to the next slide. Breast and testis examination. Now we always talk about self, self breast examination for men. Now it's better to start on time so that you can know what normal looks like and feel like. And for men, check the testis to know what normal feels and look like because there have been cases of testicular cancer and you can pick it on time. Once you notice that it's an abnormal hardness, if it's getting hard, if it's getting um, painful, especially if it's one that is getting bigger than the other, it's, an, it's, it's a point of call for check immediately. All right, so this is from for, um, the 20s. Let's move down to our B, oh, I ought to write, uh, okay, this is for the 30s. This is for the 30s. <laughs> so everything in the 20s plus this. So most times people you know, want to have children in their 30s. I don't know how early a lot of us had our kids, but a lot of people I know had theirs in their 30s. So this is the time to have a preconception examination, particularly for women who have got acne. There are three symptoms I would want to emphasize on. Acne, hair, if you're having, let me call it like mustache. If you're having hair on your chin as a 30 year old um, woman, hair on your chin, abnormal hair on your, on your face, acne and irregular periods. So irregular periods at times can be seen as, oh, it's okay. I don't have to deal with this issue every month. It comes just once in three months and I'm fine with it as long as it's coming. It's not okay. It could be a sign of polycystic ovarian syndrome, which causes subfertility. So if you're having irregular periods on unusual facial hair, acne, this is a time for you to speak with the doctor to check your female hormones and to test for ovulation. So there's a way we test for ovulation. But if once you tell the doctor these symptoms, I'm sure they would, they would, they would screen you for that. Remember, it's easier preventing it. Whatever they have to give you, they give you on time so that you don't have to deal with fertility treatment. Now, the heart. If you've got anybody in the family who have died due to sudden heart attack or death, less than the age of 40, don't wait until you become 40 before you request for an echocardiogram. So it's called, don't worry about all these um, words I'm using. I've got this list, everything I'm saying, it's in a, in a brochure, which I'm going to talk about. So you can get it later. But if you want to write it, um, all fine. So for the heart, request for an echocardiogram. It's an ultrasound scan of the heart. When you hear of familiar pattern of sudden death, sudden cardiac death, it's usually 90% of cases due to something called HOCM, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. And an echocardiogram will pick it up. Not ECG, not the electrical tracing, all right. And I, I want to strongly advise, before you register yourself in a gene, please speak, just do this for yourself. I think it costs like 5,000 naira in Nigeria, an ECG machine. Do an ECG test of your heart to know, uh, and you can request for a cardiac stress test. That's actually the specific test for it. To know the capacity, what your heart can contain. We've heard of several people that died while they were exercising, while they were, while they were playing basketball, tennis. You don't want to have that happening. Just check before going there. So you would know if you can, because you would have signed a disclaimer form before you get into the gym, isn't it? So they are covered. So do it and know what your heart can contain. Regarding exercise, what we advise is exercise up to the point where you are too breathless to sing, not 
when you are totally exhausted and not more than 30 minutes of intense exercise every day. So do whatever intense cardio until you cannot sing. Once you get to that point, please stop. Now that's for the heart. Now let's talk about the bowel. Um, that's the tummy. If you've got anybody in the family who has died of any issue with the colon, maybe rectal cancer, colon cancer, before you clock 40, speak to the GP so that they can do a camera scan and exclude any risk factor from you. Don't wait, don't wait until your 50s. So that's for the bowel. And um, for the prostate, the same applies. If you've got anybody who has got prostate cancer, please request a prostate specific antigen test. It's called a PSA. Do that while you are in your thirties. Usually they do it by the time you clock 40 and they check if it's high. If it's high, there's, there's, there are several medications to you know, abate it. Now your skin, the skin is the largest organ in the body. And like I said, aging starts from the age of 30. So we usually, my advice is once you clock 30, stop taking sugar. If you can stop sugar, you would reverse a whole lot of um, aging process and inflammatory process in the body. Stop sugar. That's, that's one of the advice proven to help the skin. Secondly, if you know that you have a mole, you know there's some harmless moles or scars or spots in the body that you just live with, and you just notice that this particular spot or mole is getting bigger, it's changing color, it's itchy, it's discharging, please, it could be a sign of skin cancer. Now, I'm not going to talk about, I, I, I wouldn't want to talk, um, I'll just say one or two things. Try not to use um, creams with hydroquinone or harmful substances. Um, be very careful about um, all the body products, basically. Yeah, let's leave it at that for the skin. But remember, it's the largest organ in the body. It can also develop cancer and, it, and you can prevent aging just by stopping sugar. And um, start using your sunscreen, <laughs> SPF 50, very important. All right, so from your 40s, now when you get to 40, the big four zero, <laughs> you need a radical lifestyle change. And when I talk about lifestyle change, you need to start winding down, start planning to rest. Rest must be one of your to-do lists every day. Of course, your diet should change. Um, that's a different life um, ball game. We had um, an expert talk to us about dietary modification. That I can do, but I wouldn't want to take that time now because it's a whole lot to talk about. But um, you can just read about healthy lifestyle or cardioprotective lifestyle and you will see things that you can change in your diet. Now you can check your vitamin D levels. In Nigeria, we, or in any tropical country, we, have, we don't have this problem <laughs> because there's sun everywhere. But because from here you get it, from your car, you're going to, sorry, from your house to your car, from your car to work, from work back home, most of us don't have enough exposure. Now, if vitamin D is low in the body, that's what usually causes this symptom. When people just say, I'm just tired. I don't even know what's wrong with me. I'm just tired. The doctors have checked me. I've done my blood. I eat well, but I'm just tired. See, it could be due to low vitamin D levels. Once I hear people say that, I just, just go and check your vitamin D. And then when they replace it, they feel better again. So another thing about vitamin D is if it's low and you don't replace it, it can lead to something called osteoporosis. Now I'll explain it. It's when the bones just begin to break without a fall or yeah, without a fall or just with little impact. When you start having very brittle bones, you don't want that happening to you. So that's one of the reasons why you should check this from your 40s because you don't, you're, let's leave that as, um, uh, as it is. Now, menopause is real. I, <laughs> a lot of women, I don't even know if they see their doctors for the symptoms because we just carry on with life. Now, by the time some people um, start um, achieve early menopause from the age of 40, and some people, maybe due to surgery, they've got their ovaries removed or so and they just are having the symptoms now there are five cardinal symptoms if you are, as a woman you start having night sweats 
you're sleeping at night and you just can't keep your clothes on. You have to open the windows. You are sweating. This is not something you can ignore. It's something that would affect your sleep um, at night. Or you get to work. You just suddenly find out that you're forgetting your password. You can't concentrate in a meeting. You're asking questions. You are losing your confidence. You are already a top manager. You've gotten to the peak of your career, but you're not delivering results. You're, you're just, you know, those are, they're, they're not easy symptoms because trust me, it, it knocks down the confidence of even the best. Thirdly, your libido just drops. You're having this unusual dryness down below. The kids have left home. You're having your spouse with you, but you can't, you know, you can't function. And you're doing everything. There's no problem, but it just, it's just not there. It's a sign of menopause. Of course, the main one is when the periods taper off and then stops. So bef- some people will still be having their periods and having the symptoms. So it's not, don't wait until the period stop. Once you start having the symptoms that like I've described, you can request for hormone replacement therapy. They just replace the female hormones in your body and you'll feel better again. Now, the thyroid function is very important here too because like I said, it's the hormone that controls the metabolism. If it drops and is not replaced, it can also lead to the symptoms I've just described. So you, and that's when you see a lot of people, they will say their mom, I can't talk to them. They have been troublemakers, just crying without any reason, depressed. It's a symptom of menopause. Now we have something called the andropause. So that's for men. <laughs> yeah, so that's when you start seeing this fat redistribution. A man who didn't have tummy before, now start having trunkle, you know, tummy. I, let, I, let me use the lame man, so start having big belly. And um, you know, thin neck, thin legs. Of course, the erectile um, subfunction starts to happen. Um, if the, they start feeling unnecessarily tired, if that's happening to you, it just shows that the testosterone is reducing and you can speak with the doctors. I will still have a little talk about this andropause in under men's health. And then we can have a discussion about that. All right, so that's for age 40. Now let's move down to the 50s. Yeah, so by the time you clock 50, please, you need a mammogram. You need a mammogram as your 50th um, gift to yourself. You can also have, of course, you would have started your pap smear from age um, 25. So by age 50, they will start calling you every five um, every every five years. So it's something you should also do from age 50. Now, bowel cancer screening is non-negotiable. Um, after the age of um, 50, you need to check your bowel cancer. So and everybody from age um 60 to 74 in UK is usually offered a, 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 a home test kit to check for any risk factor. And if you are over 75, you can always ask for that. Now I'm saying all this because um, it, I wasn't raised there. A lot of, a lot of these are new to us. Um, so it's just, if, if you don't get it, maybe if you have moved, just ask the GP and they will give it to you. So um, there's another one called the abdominal aortic aneurysm screen. It, this is usually in men. So the screen, it's a big blood vessel that passes through the tummy. It shouldn't bust. It's like <laughs> the central um, blood, central pipe in the body. So at that point in time, they check the diameter and it should be within a particular, a certain diameter. So it's very important. By the time you are age 65, you need to check um, the abdominal aorta to, and check the diameter in your body. So that I've just run through from the 20s to the 40s to the 60s. Now let's move on um, to, I hope that's all. Yeah, so the symptoms you need to scream about, that you need to scream about. So, so this is not about screening. Now let's start from the brain. That's one of the things we worry about. Brain, brain, brain. Sign of intracranial tumor. Please listen carefully. If you have any form of vomiting in the morning, you don't just wake up in the morning and you just start throwing up. That could be a sign of intracranial tumor that there's something growing in the brain. It's not normal. 
for you to wake up every as as um 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 that that as um let me put this covered. If you're not pregnant, then <laughs> let's leave the pregnant women alone. Now, if you're not pregnant and you're having this symptom, then you should have it checked immediately. If you have neck stiffness, just sudden neck neck stiffness, there's a problem going in there. Now, for brain bleed and stroke, let me talk about some signs you shouldn't um, ignore. If, if you start having, if you have a sudden loss of vision and you regain it back, or you suddenly can't use your hand, and after five minutes you shook it and you can and your function came back again, that is a transient neurological loss. It shows that something is occluding in the brain. It's a huge red flag. And a lot of people give the sort testimony. Oh, I was, I woke up, I couldn't see. And I did this and I did that. And I regained my sight. That need, you need to be admitted immediately. It's not something to, don't even drive. If it happens, just stay where you are and tell them to take you to the hospital to have a scan. Now, so that's for the brain. If you have a sudden slurred speech, you're talking and people are telling you that your mouth is deviating to, to a, a, an unusual site. You know, you can easily compensate and say, oh, no, 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 nothing is wrong with me. That's not a good sign at all. Um, yeah, of course, if, if you have any form of double vision, unnecessary feet, all this I'm saying, I've listed down in a brochure that you can get afterwards. Yeah, so another thing I want you to um, notice, if you have a sudden, they call it a thunderclap, sudden thunderclap headache. People describe it as the worst headache they've ever experienced in their life. And it's usually at the back of their head. Please don't take paracetamol and go to work. If you have a headache, most headaches are usually in front, like a tight band around the head. But if this headache came like as if someone used a boot to hit the back of your head, boom, and you had to hold the head, it eventually resolve, but it's a sign of bleed, of stroke in the head. Now for meningitis, if this can happen in adults or children, if you have sudden neck, sudden fever with neck stiffness, um, stiffness and then there's this particular rash that comes up, we call it non-blanching. Most rash, when you press it, you will see your, you will see a white line. You can actually press and you see your, your, the, the pressure between your hand and the skin will produce like a white surface in the skin. Now, if you press this rash and nothing changes, please just go to the hospital. It me, it me, like speed down because you need a particular injection immediately. So that's a sign of meningitis. So if a child is having fever and complain of neck stiffness and cannot stand lights. It's telling you to switch off the light, switch off the light. That is not a good sign. That's for meningitis. Um, temporal arteritis. This is easily missed, but let me tell you one of the signs. If you are combing your hair and you realize that the comb is hurting your scalp, it's painful, or you're eating, and your, there's something called jaw claudication and you can feel pain around your jaw, moving down to, moving up to your head. If you don't address, as simple as these two signs is, if you don't address it on time, when I say on time, I mean same day, by having steroids, the, the, the person can lose the sight irreversibly. So if you start combing your hair and you feel that there's carp tenderness, or you're eating and you around your jaw is just painful. These are not things to um, ignore. Now let's move to the eyes and the nose. I've talked about glaucoma and let's have a talk about also um, the eye, just one of the red, the worrying signs to scream off. If one eye suddenly becomes red and painful, please go to the hospital immediately because you need to have it checked on time. Now the common one is, we call it Apollo, conjunctivitis, where both eyes will be itchy, watery, painful. That is viral. But if you just see a bloodshot eye, you wake up and your eye is all red. Oh, this white part you are seeing is all red and it's painful. Just go. Or if there's a sudden eye loss in one eye, straight to the hospital. You don't want to lose your sight. Now, osophageal, that's the food pipe. The sign of autophagial cancer, I've talked about the vaccine to prevent it, isn't it? Now, in the absence of any viral infection, 
in the absence, if you start having an unusual hoarseness of voice, you just say, ah, my voice is going, um, I can't sing like I should. My voice used to be very high peak, now it's now deep. And it's lasting longer than three weeks. If you have any long lasting cough, which has defied all treatments, and you're just coughing, 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 or sore throat longer than three weeks, especially if you drink alcohol or take or smoke cigarettes, this could be a sign of esophageal cancer. All right, so let's move down to the heart. So I'm going from head to toe. Now, everything around this chest we'll talk about today. Lung cancer is just something I described up there. If you know you smoke cigarettes, it is about time to stop. There is no two way. It's part of the radical lifestyle change. Stop it because it causes lung cancer. Um, in addition to what I've said, if you have any, any form of blood in your phlegm, you're brushing your teeth, you spit out your phlegm and you see blood in there. Don't ignore it. And um, if there's any form of, uh, if you have been exposed to ad asbestos, maybe you worked with uh, maybe a shipping company, one of the others, um, maybe on a rig and you're exposed, or you're, or you're a construction worker and you're exposed to ad asbestos, that could also increase the risk of lung cancer. So you need to speak with the occupational health team within the um, team and let them know if you're experiencing any sign. So before you start getting with things like weight loss, um, breathlessness, these are the salient signs that come in. Just coughing, 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 having blood in your, in your cough. That's not good. Now, cardiac arrest. Let me tell you the sign. Now, um, we've got the right and the left part of the chest. The heart is in the left side of the chest. You see where this guy put the love part? <laughs> that is where your heart lies. Now, the pain of cardiac arrest is not the pain you can point to. You can't, if, if, my, if I'm having um, gastric ulcer, I can say, oh, it's here in the middle of my chest. If, my, if I'm having rib pain, maybe I exerted myself in the gym, I can point to it where the pain is. For the one in the heart, you can't point to it. It's described as a crushing crushing left-sided pain. So if you have any pain here and it's like someone sat on your chest and this pain now moves here to the neck and goes down to your arm like this and suddenly you become sweaty, that is a sign of cardiac arrest. A lot of people can hold it and wait for some time and then it resolves, but trust me, without any intervention, it, can, it will come back. And when it comes back, it will come back in full force. So when once that happens, you know what you should do? Just lie flat, call for help, and don't drive. Don't try to help yourself at that point. Make sure there's someone to come to see you and try to get to the hospital within 30 minutes, before 30 minutes, because there's something, all this um, clot and intervention is usually time-based. Remember, we are what we know and doing what we know part-time. Within 30 minutes, so if, it, if, they, if they ask you the question, I told them it happened, a day ago, the treatment will change. So get to the hospital on time. Now for breast cancer, um, like I said, we should know the normal for us. What is normal, what's abnormal as we, as we grow um, with age. If you notice any lump with or without pain, it needs, to be it needs to be checked. Any thickening, any changes of the skin around the breast needs to be checked any form of discharge from the nipple, if you are not lactating or pregnant, needs to be checked, especially if you are postmenopausal. Now, men eh, also have breast cancer. Men can also have breast cancer. So don't also check yourself. I have seen men with breast cancer. And um, so we, we are done with the chest area. Let's move down to the tummy. Now, there's this particular cancer I worry about so much because when people pick it up, I have not seen in my 14 years of being a doctor, I've not seen anyone who has lived longer than six months from symptoms to death. It's, it just, it's like it switches off the life of one's life. Now, let me tell you the symptoms of pancreatic cancer. Um, if you are greater than 40, if you are 40 and above, 
and you start having jaundice. Jaundice is yellow, when you see yellowness of the eye, the palms, or you suddenly start itching your skin. You don't know why you're itching. It's not like you have an infection. It could be due to high bilirubin. That's what causes jaundice. Please just check yourself. These are things that people can ignore and just say, mm, I, will, I, will, I, will set, I will schedule time for it. But it's a huge sign. Sudden onset of jaundice and you're 40 years old. Or someone who is 60, my mama at home, all of a sudden you diagnose um, new um, diabetes at age 60. Mm -mm, it's not a good thing. And then let me tell you, let me tell you the normal, the usual signs. They start telling you that they, that when they eat like little three spoons of, of food or of rice, they're easy satiety. They don't want to eat so much again. Of course, they start losing weight, but they would attribute it to the fact that they are not eating enough. So easy satiety is not a good thing. And then they start having this dull back pain or abdominal pain. The symptoms are usually very vague. Dull abdominal pain, nausea. So they have the nausea, at times they don't vomit. But one thing that is common with them is that new diabetes, little food. They won't want to eat like, as usual again. So they can't put that, they'll be telling mommy share to jail and they'll say, mm, one, one meal a day is okay for me. That's not a good sign. Um, bowel cancer, one of the um, cardinal things we ask people is, is there any changes in your normal bowel movement? We all have our usual bowel movement. Some people have theirs as, um, you know you know the type of stool you have. And if you just notice that you're having diarrhea for three days, then constipation for two days, and then alternating like that, that is not good. It's not good. And then if you have, of course, any form of weight loss, unex an, an unexplained rectal bleeding, now, things like hemorrhoids can cause rectal bleeding or maybe, um, maybe a scratch, anything. But if you're having this constant rectal bleed, it's not a good sign. Now, another thing I want people to do, once you become 40, before you flush, after, you, um, after you've done number two, please check and look at the normal color of your stool because you need to know what's normal for you. If you start having black, black stool, black stool is not normal. If you're having, if you're taking things like iron tablets, it, that can make it um, black, but you know, it's explained. And before they give you, would have told you that these are, these are the things that would happen. It would do this. But if you're not taking any iron tablets and just then all of a sudden you're having black tarry stool or stool mixed with blood, it's a sign of colon or rectal cancer. Now let's talk about men's health. Now I talked about andropause earlier. For any man here, if you have any recurrent visible blood in your urine, even if it's once, it doesn't have to be recurrent, you shouldn't see blood in your urine. It shows that there's something going on either in the kidney or the bladder. It could be a sign of bladder cancer or kidney cancer. So, and it's not because you're, you, you didn't drink water. No. There's the difference between concentrated urine and blood in the urine. Now, on explain weight loss too. Uh, let me talk. Let me say something about weight loss. It is not normal to lose more than ten percent of your body weight in a month. The normal, healthy, acceptable weight loss is zero point five to one kilogram a week. So, in a month, no matter what dietary changes you are you are you are doing. You should not have, you should not lose more than five kilograms in a month. So I'm just talking about if you're losing one kilogram a week, one kilogram a week. So it should be four a month. If you suddenly lose like 10 kilograms, there's something going on wrong in your body. Now let's move down to men's health. If you start waking up more than usual at night to wee, it could be a sign of diabetes or something called um, the prostatic hypertrophy. So be, be, below the bladder, there is a, an organ called the prostate. As men get older, it gets bigger and your urine tube passes through this prostate. Let me try and describe it. So this is the urine tube here coming down through the penis and this is the prostate holding it like this. So as it gets bigger, it squeezes it 
it squeezes it. And then you start experiencing that it starts taking you a while before you get started. Or you find out that you need to rush. You start wetting yourself uncontrollably. Or you start experiencing the need to pass urine again a few minutes after urinating. These are signs of the prostate gland getting bigger. Now, in most cases, it could just be growing, just age. But it's good to check it to be sure that it's not cancer. All right. So for women's health, now, any form of bleeding after sex is, needs to be checked. Any form of bleeding in between periods needs to be checked. Remember, we've known the normal for us. So if you start seeing bleeding in between periods, um, the only exception to this is if you are on, there's a coil called the Mirena coil. At times, at times it could, or maybe any hormonal um, contraceptives can cause this, but it still needs to be checked. It still needs to be checked. Any form of bleeding after menopause, six months after menopause, you should not have any form of bleeding again. It, it could be a sign of endometrial cancer or any form of lingering abdominal back or back pain. Back pain. That's, we need to check the ovaries. So let's move down to the kidney. Now we talk about kidney failure, you know, most of the, and that's where my concern lies when people talk about um, um, herbal medicine, you know, self-medication, using soaps and all this. Yeah, because the kidney is like the, is like the washer room of the body. Anything you take, that's where it's, and the liver, that's where it gets washed off. Now, if there's a lot of toxic metals, it can cause kidney renal failure. Now, how you can know is this. If you have any form of changes in the amount of urine you're passing, either you're passing too much or too little, or you're, I've, I've talked about waking up more than four times in the night to wee, or going for days without passing urine. That's not normal. And then maybe when you pass urine, the urine becomes so frothy, so frothy. At times you pass urine on the on maybe on the ground, and then you see ants coming around the urine because of the amount of sugar you're losing, or there's blood, or you're having this sudden mouth breath, uh, bad breath, smell like ammonia, like we in your breath. Or you wake up in the morning and your face and ankle, this you can't even miss. The eye, this is not puffy face, it's not your cheek. The eye will become so puffy. I, I, I really wish I saw a picture. I, I couldn't get one. So puffy. And then during the day, as you walk around, it resolves. That is a sign of kidney failure. Now let's talk about the bones, the joints, and the limb. Now, if you had any form of new back pain that is waking you up at night, you know, back pain, you should know, uh, maybe you take some paracetamol or naproxen and you feel better. But this one, is worse when you're actually sleeping at night. Don't ignore it, please. Now, in a child, what kids usually do is that they, they stop using that joint. They start limping. It could be a sign of osteomyelitis. So if a child is saying, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to play football, and have, having this low-grade fever, low, the, the fever is not usually very high, but the catch Symptom is that they avoid using a particular joint. Please don't say they have been, you know, they're malingering. They need to be checked on time. Now, for adults, if you have any, any form of changes in your ability to control your urine and bowel movements, you start wetting yourself and having and fecal soiling. Mm -mm. Or, you, or you wipe yourself with a tissue paper and you can't feel the tissue against your bum or your anus. That's not good. Or you're fine, you start having pins and needles feeling on your legs. There is something called cauda, it's a big a medical word, but I would explain cauda equina syndrome. It shows that's when the spinal cord, you know, let me just say sudden loss of function, sudden loss of function, like sudden paralysis. So before that paralysis happens, these are the kind of changes that people would have been ignoring over time. Now, for mental health, We've had this um, discussion here, so I wouldn't dwell much on it. In the absence of any form of trauma, maybe grief, you just have to have in this low mood, crying uncon unconsolably, irritable, loss of interest in hobbies. You stop what you enjoy doing. 
and this is lasting for greater than two weeks, or you cannot initiate sleep. You are always on your phone till three, four, or you, you sleep, you wake up, you sleep, you wake up, and then you wake up in the morning, you are unrefreshed for greater than two weeks. You, 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 of course, maybe you don't want to eat and then you start losing weight or don't put gain weight or, uh, <laughs> with the symptoms. You need to see someone. So um, there's no template to grieve at a time people, or maybe a loss or something. At times this can be directed towards something, but if you don't have anything going on, of course, there's always something that causes mental health, this type of issues, but this is, um, for it to be going on greater than two weeks, it, it needs to be um, um, investigated. Now for, me, for suicidal risk, these are the seven cardinal questions we ask people. But you know, with all this going on, do you feel worthless and hopeless? If the person says yes, hmm. can ask, do you feel your life is worth living? And the person says no. Mm, okay, are you able to keep yourself safe? The person says no. Are you in possession of any gun or weapon or you have access to it? Or maybe there's a river somewhere or you've researched something or sniper and the person says yes. And do you feel like cutting yourself? Yes, yes. Have you written a note? So most times they would have, planned it, maybe written some closure notes or so. If anyone says this, please, I, I am a Christian, I believe in prayers, but this person needs to be admitted on time. And um, at times people have a way they give it off, maybe by social media, maybe they just say it passively, but uh, it needs to be investigated. So I've come to the end of our scream and screening. I can take questions now. Wow, wahala, wahala. <laughs> hey, you see the way all these people. Mm, I hope you guys are fit, yeah. Mm. Very uh, scary. Um, I hope you guys are fit. Because, because this um, I don't even know, I don't know where to start from because um, when she was saying that people that have big, big belly. Uh, your tummy is growing. My wife said I should go and scream for Andrew, Andrew Post. I just looked at her. I said, no, you're not correct. I am fine. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Desola. I mean, this has been very, 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 I mean, you know, they just tell us go and do annual medical checkup, you know, and we go and do it and say we are fine. They do blood works and all, you know, but you have, you know, gone deeper into some of these things and um you know i had to be assessing myself and checking myself okay do i feel this do i feel that do i feel this do i feel that i am very very particular about my health as in i'm one person i don't joke people know me i don't joke with my health once i begin to have something i want to check i want to know what is happening you know because i mean i've had that the body can heal itself so i i i, I try to you know do what is right within the best of my ability you know and all okay so if you have any question let's ask but i think we had some questions earlier on in the chat box um see all these people they don't want to be 40 they want to pass their age at 39 hmm. god pass you okay so somebody you talked about i mean i can see hands i'm going to call you people talk somebody asked when you talked about sugar yes now, what sugar are we talking about? Some, some people are asking what about brown sugar and honey? You know, should we also stop honey? Should we stop brown sugar? Should we, you know? So um, I would say stop any form of refined sugar. So um, people talk about pure honey, but you can't really ascertain if it's pure or not. Um, everything we take is converted to sugar in the body. Most of, in fact, most every food is converted to sugar. So we've got the natural sugar in fruits, which you can take, which is okay. But you see that refined white one, um, stop it. Any fruit from concentrates, don't buy it. Go for the one, the real smoothie. And the greener your smoothie, the healthier. Uh -huh. Yeah, the greener, the kiwi, the cucumbers, the celery. Yeah, so go for the green ones. Don't go for the red ones. Go for, if you want to take a, a wine, go for the white, um, <laughs> don't go for the red. So um, that's how we try to balance it up. But you, everything will still be changed to sugar, but refined sugar, no. It ages you ugh, faster. Thank you very much. You know, I, 
I make my smoothies myself every day. In fact, my expense on food, it is those um, organic fruits and um, vegetables that takes the highest form of expense, you know, because I don't even trust what they put in the cans and what they say is smoothies, you know. I want to do it by myself. And, you, you know, I, I think that many of us don't love ourselves because when you see the way people eat, when you see the way they treat their health, you know that they don't love themselves. It's almost as if they want to die. You know, mm. so thank you very much for, for this. I don't take sugar, um, you know, and um, I think if you can throw it away from your house, people will think that their children need sugar. And I always tell them, the test bot can be retrained. Yeah. It can be retrained. If when you were born, it was Agbo that they started giving you, you will now start tasting very sweet. It's the same way you take a bitter cola and it starts tasting sweet after a while, you know. So thank you very much. Okay, I have hands up. I'll take the questions in the chat box, but let me take Joyce. Joyce, do you have a question to ask? And I can see David and Abiola Barua. Abiola Barua. Joyce, are you there? Um, if Joyce is not there, David, do you have a question? Okay, I'm was struggling to unmute. Okay, Thank Joyce you. Good here. morning. Yeah. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so so much. First of all, because just for follow up and to be sure we know what we are doing after this. How can we get the the brochure you, you mentioned? Okay. Um, I'll, can I send the link here, um, PF? Don't worry, you, I will send it to our members. All right, so okay. the, we'll send it to the group on WhatsApp. Okay. All right, thank you. Then how do we handle glaucoma issue? Is there some are saying, oh, surgery, some say surgery, at what age? Then okay. some say, oh, there are some eye drops that can, what do you recommend? Especially when that person is in the 60s. In Thank the 60s. you. All yes. right. All right. Okay, so the essence of screening is to detect abnormalities on time. So usually, um, I, I live in the UK, we've got the optometrist in most pharmacies. The pressure of the eye the, the eye is full of fluid. This The globe is a globe full of fluid. And you don't want, it's, it's just like the tire of your car. You don't want it to be too swollen because there's an, a nerve, an, an optic nerve. Everything we're seeing is transferred through that water, that tube into the nerve and then to the brain and then we see. Now, the normal pressure is between 10 to 21. Now I'm saying this for everyone to know. So when you speak with the optometry, just tell them, what's my eye pressure? If you know that they've, they've, they saw it um, last year, or we did it in Nigeria last year, it was 12, and now it's 16, and now it's 18. You know, it's still, it's still within the range of normal, but you, because you've been checking, you can now say, I, 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 I don't have to wait until it's more than 21. You have to book an appointment with an ophthalmologist. An op so an ophthalmologist is a specialist that deals with diseases of the eyes. An optometrist will check the pressure. They can check your, they can prescribe glasses for you. So they have got two different roles entirely. So when you see an ophthalmologist, they will now prescribe based on your risk factors, your age. If you've got other diabetes, maybe you've got diabetes, hypertension, they can say, oh, let's abate this on time. Then they can talk about surgery. They can talk about giving you some eye drop that will release the pressure. It, I, now I would leave that to them to the side. But the hard, the hard work is for you to know. I see that I go to both, it's 20 pounds. Check your eye. In fact, that's my usually my gift to people. Just buy an, a, an optometrist check card, gift card to people to go and check their eye pressure. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Desola is always giving medical. I remember when I came to the UK, she bought me a box <laughs> that I can use to check my blood, uh, uh, blood and sugar regularly and I use it. Yeah. So um, instead of giving people Christmas amper uh, that will kill them, you know, do yeah. um, let them go and check their eyes. Okay. Um, David Adeola Benson and um, Abiola Baru, I'll take your questions together. So David, can we have you? Um, and Abiola. Okay, sir. Um, thank you, doctor. Uh, I'm in my 40s and, and I have very small stature. So I, I'm being very, very careful uh, with what I take. And then this red flag about sugar, I got it. And about, um, I think I need to throw the sugar in the house away, right away. Now, in my, the question, my question is um, on vitamin D. Yes. How do, you, how do you work about it? I work more, I'm an IT person, I'm inside the server room. 
AC, AC, you come out. At what particular part, time of the day do we need to go and take it naturally? And what is the duration that you need to stay in? Or if you can just sneak out, of, because the AC is too much, just sneak out to the sun and get it. And how do we do about the vitamin C, vitamin D? Thank you. Vitamin D. Okay. okay so we, we. Dr. Deshola, before you take, let me take one more person so that we can be taken to two questions and make it faster. Abiola, um, can we have your question? Okay, thank you very much, um, Doctor, for that insightful presentation. Um, for those of us that um, come to the UK once in a while um, and maybe coming for maybe Christmas, is there a way we can contact you? Um, maybe can give us your contact details. And also PF mentioned that um, you reverse um, or you've You've been involved in reversing um, neuro neuro issues such as maybe autism and you need, I don't know if it's something that, that is your field as well, so that we can I mean I can see you when I come to the UK to discuss for that. Thank you. Okay, right. so Dr. Nisala, those two questions. Yeah. Okay, so um, regarding the vitamin D, we usually advise people to go out at about six thirty. You know when the sun is out but not hot. Where you can see the sun, but once once it becomes like uh, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., where you can feel the heat on your body is no longer vitamin D. So when you can see the sun, but it's not scorching, it's not hot, you can't feel the heat. That is when that's the best time to go out to get it. So you can do, use you can do your regular walk. People that do regular morning walk um, um, get vitamin D at around that um, six to eight a.m the best time ever. Now you can also check your levels and request for supplements. So there are vitamin D supplements that you can take. Um, it, it comes in different strengths. So you can request that from the doctor. And also you can buy there's some vitamin D rich um, meals like drinking bro, um, bone broth. Um, you know, the you can just go to the um, butcher and buy bone broth and slow cook it and drink it. Good calcium, good vitamin D. So those are ways you can replenish yourself while still working, coping with your IT work at home. And for Mrs. Barua, yes, when, when um, my contact details, I can share with um, PF to give you. And when you come, we can have a chat. But I work, I'm a consultant in um, reflex integration. I've got my daughter who has defied her odds, was nonverbal, and that was the, that was what worked for her. <laughs> yeah, so that's another. I'm coming back to talk about that in a bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bamidele Ayenibo, Amalaukori, and Christine Ajayi. Can we take your questions together? Then we'll go to the chat box. Okay. Those are the three final questions that will take live. Then we'll go to the chat box. Okay. Bamidele. Um, oh, okay. Amala. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I read a book some time ago, and um, he talked about the big four which you avoid. I know you mentioned sugar. He also mentioned milk, processed food, and hydrogenated oil. Uh, I would like your take on them. Then the in eating, I understand, you talked about bowel, and I know that um, it's been recommended that it's good to eat early and keep the bowel uh, uh, free for like 12 hours. If we are eating, particularly dinner, how early should it be done? And then what's your take on meat in general? Uh, I was told that our alimentary canal is adapted more for vegetables, for plant products rather than beef. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, sorry, let me take um, Dr. Amala Okore and uh, we'll take um, Christian Ajayi. Dr. Amala. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Desola, for your brilliant presentation. I just wanted to also add that um, for the screenings, for those, especially those of uh, those people that have a strong family history, yeah. it's recommended that they start screening at about 10 years before the age of onset of their family member that has an illness. So, for instance, mm -hmm. if you have a mother that had maybe breast cancer at 40, you probably should start screening like from 30. And you know, that's one of the new, um, one of the guidelines that we follow back home here. I don't, I guess it's internationally accepted. Then also, I'm, I'm happy that you were talking about children intermittently because a lot of times we forget that some of these things we talk about in adults are coming closer to the children. 
children are also getting diabetic, children are also getting a lot of non-communicable disease and obesity. So um, I'm happy you intermittently talked about um, children as well. And um, I would really want to hear your what you're going to teach us on the reflex integration that I work with a lot of children like that throughout. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> Okay. okay, Dr. Amala, thank you. Then Christina Ajayi. Um, Christina is one of our European... Uh, Hello. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Hello, Desala. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you, sister. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable. I went into early menopause like eight years ago. Hmm. And of course, I normally see Ghani like every year. But I don't really have some serious symptoms. I want to ask, when is the best time to start taking hormone replacement? Okay. Okay, so that's you. All right, so let me start from the first question about um, the beef and my take on it. So as we get older, we usually advocate that people should take more white um, protein, mm. more white um, meats. Um, and even when you want to do that, ensure that it's organic. So there's something called the GM, genetically modified food. And um, we, we you know, bromate, all these things. So most of this beefs that we are taking has got a lot of things in there that, we, that might not really be helpful to our body. So we try to avoid that. In fact, for people that, um, for people that have got heart problems, we tell them that avoiding beef is cardioprotective. Try not to take beef because it causes gout. It causes, um, of course, a lot of heart problems. And um, what else is it about beef? So a lot of things have been linked to beef. So if you can take white, like turkey, fish, cod, that's a very good choice. Now regarding sugar, I don't know about the four softs um, that you said you um, read somewhere. And like I said, nutritional adjustment is a big one. In fact, we don't adjust as doctors. We try to we employ life coaches to do that. But there are four things. The, Sugar, cut it out. Salt, if you can cut salt out too, we always say less than six grams. If you measure six grams, that's what you should have in a day. Cut out Maggi, any mono, uh, all this monosodium glutamate, cut it out of your meals. Any oil that congeals in room temperature, you know all those, let me use Yoruba, Ogidi Eko, all this oil <laughs> that <laughs> congeals, try not to use that, use more olive oil, oils that easily evaporate when heated. That's what we advise people to use. And then cut out butter, you know, all this heavy fat. You can take natural fat like avocado. So rather than use butter on your bread, use avocado spread. Um, th that's what's going on on my mind now. And then time to eat. It depends on your body metabolism. But like I said, from 8.30, it slows down and can also be affected by menopause, by thyroid issues. So. It depends on when your body, then what you eat, and also when you eat. So um, at, at the end of the day, you'll find out what works for you. But from, and from research, intermittent fasting is proven to prolong life. And there's a way to go about it. So there's the 16-8 rule. So it, shows, it says that you eat for, in 24 hours, you eat for eight hours and fast for the remaining 16 hours. And if you can do this three times a week, not every day, three times a week, you are going to add at least 20 years to your life. So let me give an example. If you start eating from 10 a.m. and you eat your dinner at 6 p.m., so that means you're eating breakfast at 10, lunch at 1, dinner at 6, and then you don't eat anything until the next day, 10 a.m. So that is 16, eight. You fast for 16 hours and you do all your eating within eight hours and do it three times a week. So that's for your question. And thank you so much, Dr. Amala for dropping by. I'm really grateful you are so spot on. Yeah, I agree with everything you've added. And for the last question, um, <laughs> I'm so happy to hear from you, uh, my sister. Um, I used to live in Sweden for nine years before moving in fact, our husband was even was the one who officiated our wedding, just to let you know how much I know her. <laughs> yes, and yes, and our Thanksgiving was in our church, so I she is my mom, mama. So for what you've said, um, 
if you don't have symptoms, if it's just the cessation of periods and you don't have any life-changing symptoms, you don't have to have hormone replacement therapy. In fact, there are some non-hormonal options that you can use if you are worried about the hormone replacement. So we've got the hormone and the non-hormonal options. And, and you, to be very sincere, you don't really have to because the, it has also got its side effects and the benefits. So if you are doing without it and you are okay, fine. Thank you very much, Dr. Desola. We have two questions in the chat box, then we will go a bit into the neuro side of you, um, then so that we can also ask if you have courses that people can take. Um, Abiola Adunai, I say, and I, doctor, for a year, for years, a year now, I noticed that I have tingling feelings on my leg, feet, arms, palms. It's quite uncomfortable, sometimes painful and numb, nibbling, I think. I have done tests, okay, numbing, numbing. I have done tests, but they can't detect anything. I have been told to take B-complex, but I haven't seen any difference. Should I continue or change medication? Kindly advice on what I should start to take. Then there's another one. What about pains in the eels, especially early in the morning or when the feet are rested for a while? So those are two questions. Okay, so for the first question, you, you, the usual, um, one of the usual tests we do when people are experiencing um, tingling in the arms, feet, and is to check for your vitamin B complex level, which um, uh, from what I've, I'm reading is you're currently replacing it. However, other things could cause it like blood sugars, it could be a sign of diabetes, it could be, uh, I, I wouldn't want to be prescriptive. What I would suggest is for you to, check, see, ask to see a neurologist. So they are the consultants in nerves. They're the ones that would give you the right um, investigation. But from what you've said, from um, vitamin, keep taking the vitamin B complex. It won't harm you, but check your blood sugars and see a neurologist. Okay, then um and then the other pain the in other, the heels. Pain yeah. in the heels, especially in the morning, or when the feet are rested for a while. So usually pain at rest. Well, we usually ask other questions around pain um, in the heels. It could be something called um achilles, an inflamed tendon of the ligament that con that connects your feet to your to your leg. So the achilles tendon, it could be that. It could be due to the shoe you're wearing. It could be due to blood, um, red blood sugars. It could be due to something called motor neuroma, motor neuroma. So people that match a lot, as soldiers, they usually come down with something like this, motor neuroma. Um, it could also be due to gout. So there are several things that can cause this symptom, this particular symptom you've described, and it can only be investigated and then we'll come down to what we see. So from what you've said, I have like five things on my mind. And um, what you can do is to see, um, um, I don't know if it's easier to see an orthopedic um, doctor and ask, or if you don't have access to that, you can see your family physician, ask them to check for um, uric acid levels, um, do an x-ray just to see if there's any degeneration of the bones, and also check your bone profile. And um, I think the all mark is for someone who can actually check, check or, or see a physiotherapist. They can actually check if there's any issues and rule out all these things I've said. But okay. if you don't have any other worrying sign, like maybe weight loss or loss of function of the, of the joint or fever, then it's not, it's not a red flag. Okay, um, thank you very much, Dr. Salad. Now, can we just, um, before we go, I'll allow you go. Um, I, I mean, you said a lot of things with me last week when we were having a meeting. And remember I shared a story with you. There was this boy who, uh, you know, son of my, my a friend. You know, the boy, when he's walking, he will be walking on his toes. So we named him Agent Hotel Lemunye. So which means, and, and we just thought it was the normal, Thing, you know, but from what you were sharing with me, um, those are things to be checked. And you talked about many of the cases, neuro um, cases, neurological cases that people are, you know, experiencing. I mean, could have been as a result of things that happen during pregnancy. 
you yes. know, do you want to talk a little bit, you know, on, I know we kind of exhausted, we have to do another session maybe next year, you know, can, do you want to talk a little bit about, about that and what people should watch out for? Ah, okay. It's a big topic. I, I, I promise I'll be back next year, but I'll just go through the neuro, the retain, the retain primitive reflexes. So, um, like I mentioned to PF, most of this, I've got a daughter who has got um, ASD. She wasn't talking for five years and we did everything. We did ABA, we did all the surgeries, speech and language and all that until I discovered the primitive reflex integration. And I realized that um, as a doctor, I'm happy that Dr. Amala is here. When a baby is born, we check for four or five reflexes. So you will see the doctor um, check the red reflex in the eye to be sure the baby can see. We hold the palm of the baby to see how, how the baby can grip the hand. We try to maneuver the baby to see, you know, like, like, like trying to drop the baby to see if the baby will try to catch up. And that, that's the moro. I'm trying, sorry, I'm holding my <laughs> laptop so it's shaking. We have the moro reflex. And then we check the, the feet of the baby. We stroke it like this and then it's, I don't know if you can see, it fans out the Babinski reflexes. So we check like four or five reflexes. I didn't know that we have almost 40 reflexes in the body that needs to be integrated. And the success of this integration is dependent on what we know and do during pregnancy. Most importantly, during the first one year of the child's growth. So um, one of the things I got to know as a doctor and even as a parent was the milestones, which is mostly the gross motto. Now, let me tell you that, that the brain, a good functioning brain has got seven functions, seven functions. So the first thing is the gross motto. So it, it, let me use a baby as an example, gross motto, the baby, a baby should be able to by one month or two months, raise the neck up and not be floppy. By six months, crawl. Um, sit up, sorry, nine months, crawl, one year, stand. That is gross motto. That is not, that is just one out of the seven. Now we have the sensory. The, in, in, when, as the brain is growing, you should, you should be able to look at normal light. Maybe you should be able to see you properly and recognize your voice. If, if mom comes into the house and you're talking, maybe you should be able to turn and know that, oh, mom is here. Maybe you should be able to listen to music, you know, dance and play with other people. That is normal sensory. Now we have the, um, autonomic function, we have the behavioral function, we have the, we have cognitive. So the brain development, there are seven, which I will delve into when I come back. Now, talking about the reflex integration, um, let me use press for West and toe walk. Of course, my daughter toe walk, but it's a, this, it's called, so you can Google it, tonic, te, so tendon guard reflex tendon guard reflex. That reflex is retained in anybody who is bouncing. In adults, they compensate by bouncing. So they're the ones that land, they're the ones that when you see their shoes, the, 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 you know where the pressure lies. So, <laughs> so if you have an abnormally um, curved shoe, that shows that the tendon guard reflex in the body is not integrated. And if it is not integrated, you would go through life in a hard way you will struggle through life. So for example, um, people that have got a retained um, uh, tonic TLR, no, 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 let's go for ATL now, asymmetric tonic neck reflex. You can Google it, asymmetric tonic neck reflex. These are the babies that never crawled. These are the babies that just stood up and started walking. My daughter did. And I celebrated it. She walked out about 10, 10 months. So she was the first to walk amongst all her peers in the nursery. And they gave her like a star. But the problem is, if a baby does not crawl, that is one of the cardinal signs of autism. Bring, put your baby back and ensure that the baby crawls. If the baby can't crawl, trust me, the baby would not be able, of course, you won't talk properly. And the, another thing is that you'll be able to swim because as an adult, you go on your falls and see how hard it is to crawl, to use, I'm talking of the cross lateral crawl. I'm not, any other crawling apart from that normal move, like, movement like this is abnormal. 
If a baby cannot do that, the right and the left part of the brain will not be integrated. They won't be able to swim and they won't be able to drive. So that the adults that will keep eating or that won't be able to park their car properly or that will keep bombing into people or, can, or won't be able to reverse park. And that the ones that won't be able to march, that the ones that, that, the, kind of, that the children you will see in the midst of other people, maybe during um, uh, Children's Day, everybody is moving left and right, but they can't follow the rhythm. They are the ones that can't ride a bicycle. So if you're riding a bicycle, remember you are, you are cycling with your legs and you're holding it and you're looking straight. They can't do that. And another thing is, if you want to notice people that have got that as an adult, they're the ones that when they are driving, they hold the steering. Once they look to the left, the car moves to the left. So they can't look to the, once they are driving, they can't see anything by their side. They can't look at their mirrors. And trust me, when you're driving, you are doing six things at the same time. You are looking at the front, the car, and you're measuring the distance between your, your car and the car in the front. You're looking at your side mirrors to see your side, and you're looking behind. If you don't integrate that reflex, you will struggle as a driver growing up, as, a, as an adult. So that is asymmetric tonic neck reflex. You can also Google another one called, um, um, I think, tonic, tonic um, labyrinthic. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the STA now. STNR is the most important reflex, and it's only present for two months. Now, let me tell you how people stop this STNR from integrating. You know when a baby rocks forward, I said they want to tumble, they want somersault, and they jack backward, and they rock forward, and they jack backwards, and they land on their, on their bum. That is when the STNR comes up. A lot of mothers become scared. Oh my God, they want to somersault. Oh, I cover me. Then they carry the baby and put them in a walker, or they stop the baby from doing that. Once the baby stops doing that, the baby would struggle with writing and reading. It's, a, it's one of the most important reflexes to integrate. So um, I can talk about, you know those children that um, struggle with, um, um, with tags on their, on, their, on their clothes. They'll tell them to remove, that they always say you should cut it off. They can't wear belts. So you always have to, they always have to wear jersey. Even some adults can't put belt on their waist because they feel uncomfortable. So they're the ones that sag their, their trousers. It's a sign of unintegrated repair because they feel uncomfortable having anything around their waist. So when I come back, I will go through all the reflexes and the signs, and I will let you know in fact, some adults struggle to date. They get by with life, kind of, they compensate. But if you integrate it, and the good thing is that once you go back and integrate that reflex, so it's the only bottom-up approach to solving neurodivergence issues. Every other therapy is top-bottom. You know, we see behavioral, we check you, we do ABA, we try to shape the behavior, that's top-bottom. The greatest one is medication. We just give you medication to numb it. After the medication wears off, you're back to the square root. That's top bottom. But you see that bottom up is addressing the root cause. And that is where the primitive reflex integration comes in place. Wow. I can go on and on. I can, there's some children that can't, they, they've got auditory processing disorder. So they're the ones that can hear, but they cannot process the information they hear and use it um properly so they're the ones that you say you know for a, for a child you can tell her go to challenge to buy me three plantain when you're coming stop by mama lagbaja drop this cloth when you're coming take the key from this and open the door and take your food from the fridge they're the ones that would they, they can't they can't do that once you tell them more than two instructions forget it so that, those are, and, and that was ah, sure that ah, why are you not sharp why are you not it's called auditory processing disorder. So they're the ones that, except you write it for them, they can't process auditory, pro and it's a huge reflex issue. So um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, PF. Yeah, yeah, you have. You yeah, have, uh, but, I, but I don't know. Yeah, I can come in January, go through everything yeah. in a detailed way, and then we'll trash it out properly. Thank you very much. Um... There is some one more question, and someone is there saying, um, you know, um, what do I do? I mean, it's um, um, what's your advice on microwave to warm or defrost food? Can it lead to cancer? Um, that person is asking that question. Then, are there courses that we can take online? I know that you sent some. I mean, the uh, the media team has got a link to you. I think you mailed to me. Do you want them to put it on the chat box or? 
you know, are there things that people can avail yeah, themselves? Yes, so by next year, hopefully January, I'm going to have um, short courses that parents can do. So we will have a parental readiness course where you would know everything you need to know about antenatal. I'm sure we've all got, most of us have got children here, but we can help our, uh, our children. We can be better grannies. We can help. There is not just, antenatal is not just going to the hospital to sing and dance. It's not about taking folic acid. There's just a whole lot. For example, let me tell you one important thing every pregnant woman should know. When you have your baby, tell the midwives, please, don't, don't yank my baby away to swaddle. Let the baby spend at least three seconds on the tummy and let the baby crawl to the breast to suckle. It's a very important reflex. It's called the bower, B-A-U-E-R. If a baby misses that particular point, that thing, that tummy to breast period, you'll find it very difficult to have emotional connection with the parents. Very difficult, almost impossible. Another thing is, leave the baby there with the placenta. Don't cut it immediately. Let, that, let the artery stop pulsating before the father cuts it off. It's very important. And then please don't give babies, you know, this um, pacifier, this stuff, it looks cute. You just knob it in the mouth, everything looks so dolled up and cute. You know those babies that when they, when you, when they want to ride, they just, ah, uh, they open their mouth and they start drooling saliva. That is what it causes. Or people that can't keep still, they would, you know, they still, as adults, they keep doing like this, you know, just <laughs> everything about their mouth, activities about their mouth. That's what a pacifier does. It stops the routine. It's called a routine reflex. So you can even Google this and read. These are things that every mother should know while still pregnant. So I told, you shouldn't buy all these things. I did not know all this. And another thing, um, let me give you, um, if you are on bed rest, please stand up and walk. Take a walk as a woman, as a pregnant woman. Don't be on a bed rest for, don't just, it's luxury. It's nice, I can't stress myself. I'm just lying down watching Netflix. I'm pregnant, I'm taking time off work. Walk, because that is one of the things that prevents autism and all these neurodivergence issues. Move, move, move. And um, I'm just trying to give you things run down my, uh, um, around my head for being pregnant. Of course, take your supplement, but if you can avoid Let's move. Let's um. Let, we'll, we'll deal with it later. Regarding the courses, I've done the parental readiness courses, which would involve the um, antenatal um, overhaul, um, what to know postpartum natal and natal and um, postnatal. Um, another one is parenting the specials. So there are some things that we would also talk about parenting the specials. So that's an, another course. So I would send out the link by January, and then we can have another session like this. Thank you very much, um, Dr. De Sola, um, for, did you answer the question on uh, microwave? Microwave, yes. I, let me answer the question. Please, um, if you must use microwave, there's a lot of research about microwave and modifying the food we eat. If you must use it, please don't use any plastic within. Buy the glass container. The, you know, there are some, it's quite expensive to store food in glass. Buy the glass container Ooh. and put it in, in, in microwave. Some people use oven. Oven is better. Just switch on and put the food in there. But I agree that if you reduce or stop the use of microwave, you would highly reduce the risk of cancer via eating food. I agree with that. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Desalas. We go into the Christmas season where people eat all kinds of things they've not eaten. What's your final advice for our people? Ah, okay. <laughs> First of all, um, like I said, um, most of us are within the age of making the radical changes. I've mentioned about choose your white meats. Eat as there's something called, okay, let your food, let your plate look like a rainbow. Like a rainbow, please, every family here. Commit to having a big bowl of. Let's not be the usual African family that will have all the muscle and one tiny bowl of salad somewhere that wouldn't be touched. Let the salad be there and not coleslaw, not the one that we have mixed with mayonnaise and all. 
green rainbow salad. And everyone should start with that. Let that be your main course with mm. a big, nice mm. pie of turkey, not meat. So go for the turkey, go for the, go for snails, go for seafood, go for, um, take a little bit of white wine, just a little bit. We, we don't, we won't say stop, but just reduce it. And if you're going to drink alcohol, please don't take more than 14 units a week. It's not advisable. What we we'll tell people is to stop it. Um, <laughs> but you know, people will still indulge anyway. So we just tell them to need to one, uh, less than 14. And um, what else, what else, what else? For the Utah season, buy this, buy, buy, buy this brochure and share. Let that be the Christmas gist. Let post about business, about um, family bickering. Let's talk about this health. Let's go through this with all our family members, and um, I hope that would make our Christmas enjoyable. Thank you very much, Dr. Please, can we go to the chat box and show us some love? Let's say thank you, Dr. D. Please, let's celebrate our, um, we have too many resource people in House of Saviors, and then um, this is our own, we're so proud of her. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I mean, I look forward to that session in January um, because there are so many things that we live um, in, in ignorance. I mean, we're talking about the other day about some children whose eyes are always turning to the other side, and you will buy people who say, I will buy them, they are you. You know, we, we just, what, whatever we don't understand, instead of researching it, we just begin to abuse people. Why are you working like Hotel Lemuya? We are all guilty. God forgive us. Thank you very much, Alessola, for this extensive, I mean, intensive session. Um, we will look forward to seeing you in January by God's grace. God bless you. Okay. You. Bye. Okay, everyone. Um, that's where I sign out today. I'm going to hand over to Mosumola. Uh, but never forget, next week is our Christmas um session so please come in your christmas attire if you have testimonials about how us of saviors has affected you improved your life in the last one year please reach out to Ayo lawrence um who is our administrator reach out to her and share your testimonials then he'll call you up during the meeting it's an open house next week and um, we're going to have a great time some christmas carols um uh, special christmas sessions and you know what um, people's Christmas experience and what have you.